So tonight we're going to be talking about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ that took place a couple thousand years ago. More than likely everyone here has heard about it or read about it, which is very important. Let's talk briefly about Christ's ministry. As the Bible indicates, he started his ministry at the age of 30. He did so by gathering his disciples, teaching them, showing them miracles, raising the dead, casting out demons, showing them healings, and many, many other signs. The word says the world would, cannot contain all the pages that Christ had done. Then Jesus was betrayed by one of his own, one that he loved, one that he spent a lot of time with. I know I'm moving through this pretty quick. A lot of uh, important information I'm skipping over. Um, this message is about the crucifixion. The first of many things that took place was Christ being brought up to be judged before the people by Pilate, a Roman governor. After going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth with the Jewish leaders, it was ordered that he be flogged. Matthew 27, 26, he ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. Also, Mark 15, 15, Luke 23, 16, and John 19, 1, all say that he be flogged. Now, the flog was about two feet long, give or take. It had either lead or bronze tips, as well as bone or metal or glass woven into the rest of the thongs. In some cases, they would attach a long hook to one of the thongs to cause even more pain and more damage. They called this the scorpion. So if you can imagine this object hitting Jesus, one, two, three, four, five, 39 times he was hit with this thing. 39 times it ripped into his flesh and tore pieces of him off of his own body. That's Jesus Christ coming off of Jesus Christ. This would have been from the bottom of his neck all the way down his back, the backside of his legs, um, probably on his sides a little bit, maybe the side of his face a little bit, completely destroying skin and muscle and nerves, exposing organs even, and his ribs. After his torturous flogging, John 19, 2, says Roman soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. This crown of thorns is actually from Jerusalem. So this is from the plant, whatever plant they use over there. Um, but this is from Jerusalem. I ordered it online. Had them shipped over here for this reason, for this message. You can see the thorns are anywhere from under an inch to over two inches long. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the Romans, they didn't lightly put that on his head. Now, whether they used some kind of gloves or held it a certain way or just pure aggression towards Christ, they jammed those on his head. Whether they used sticks or whatever they use, they jammed those thorns on his head, piercing his skin to the bone easily. Back to John 19.2. After putting thorns on his head, they put a purple robe on him. 
Now, a purple robe doesn't seem very torturous at first. But think of his entire backside. This is just one huge open wound from his head to his feet. Now drape that across there. So all those open nerve endings are now being touched by this robe. They dressed him in a purple robe and they wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. Then they saluted him, taunting, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him on the head with a reed stick, spit on him, and dropped to their knees and mocked worship. So they have flogged him, put thorns on his head, put a purple robe on his open wounds, spit on him, hit him, kicked him, slapped him, struck him with a reed stick, all while mocking him, king of the Jews. Mark 15, 20. When they were finally done mocking him. So we don't know how long they did this to him. But when they were finally done mocking him, and hitting him, and beating him. They took off the purple robe and put his clothes back on him. Once again, this robe, taken off those open wounds, could have dried a little bit. They pulled this thing off, ripping those wounds open again. Then, they put his clothes back on him, once again, pain over all those open nerves. Then in John 19, 16 through 18, he carried his cross to the place of the skull where they nailed him to the cross. According to Roman history, I know this thing isn't gigantic, but according to Roman history, a cross weighed about 300 pounds. This was not a 75 pound piece of wood. 300 pounds. Other gospels say that he was helped by a passerby named Simon to carry his cross. Either way, Jesus is beaten, tortured, exhausted body, was forced to carry or help carry this huge heavy cross to the place of his death. Now the soldiers nailed his human flesh body to that cross like a piece of wood. No more than an ordinary piece of wood, they nailed him to this cross. Not only is this a human being, but this is the true savior of us all. Having these long metal spikes driven through his hands and through his feet. Now remember, while they lay him down on this cross to nail him to it, wounds across his backside. Those have never left, those have never healed, those are still wide open wounds. And now he's laying on them, on that cross while they nail him to it. His whole backside in horrible pain, yet again. And now his weight is on it. Never a moment of relief. From the beginning of this, there was never a second of relief. In between his flogging, the thorns, the robe, the crucifixion, he didn't have a second of peace. Here he is, the savior of the world, humiliated, mocked, beaten horribly, crucified. In Isaiah 52, 14, the word says, but many were amazed when they saw him. His face was so disfigured, he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance, 
One would scarcely know that he was a man. So here he is, crucified up on this cross. The Romans gamble for his clothing. So he is naked up on this cross, completely exposed. As exposed as a person can be. And yet, he is barely recognizable as a man. Being completely nude. If that tells you how bad that man was beaten. Roman history states that crucifixion was the most extreme and ultimate punishment for slaves. For slaves, folks. The lowest of the low as far as the Romans were concerned. Romans did not do this to other Romans. They did this to what they thought was trash. Trash of the world. They crucified All this punishment, all this pain, and in Luke 23, 34, what does Jesus say? Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. If that's not a Savior, I don't know what is. Going through all of that and still pleading to, <laughs> pleading to the Father on our behalf. They mock him and say things like, let him save himself if he's really God's Messiah, the chosen one. And Roman soldiers offer him sour wine as they laugh and they make fun of him. At about noon, darkness fell across the land until 3 o'clock. Jesus has been up on that cross, slowly dying for six hours. Six hours hanging in this position. Modern medicine says his death was most likely from asphyxiation, suffocating to death because the weight of his body stretching him out against the very muscles that draw breath into his body. And those muscles slowly giving out and not allowing him to breathe any longer. Others add that all this strain could cause fluid buildup in the lungs and could cause heart failure, known today as pulmonary edema. So here it is, 3 o'clock, and in Mark 15, 34, Jesus cries out, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? A lot of people think that is when the sin of the world was put on Christ. As this happens, a bystander ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put, the reed, put it on a reed stick, and brought it to his lips. John 19.30, when he tasted it, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now, the Jewish leaders didn't want those crucified men hanging up there all weekend for the Sabbath. So they asked the Romans to hasten their death by breaking their legs. So they break the two men's legs that were crucified with Christ on each side of him. They get to Christ, and they see that he's already dead. John 19, 34. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water flowed out. Here he is, tortured, humiliated, beaten beyond recognition, crucified, now dead. <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> 
We've covered his crucifixion and his death, which is hard to hear and is hard to talk about. This isn't the point of the message tonight. Pay very close attention. The point of this message is that while Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was being flogged, he saw you, Daniel. He said, yes, you're worth this. As he's having thorns put on his head and being mocked and having that robe draped over his open wounds, he saw you, Vicky. He said, yes, you are worth this. As he's being crucified up on that cross, he saw you, Kevin. He said, you are worth this. Hanging up on that cross, slowly dying for six hours. He saw us all. He saw us all who seek him and said, I see your sin and yes, you are worth this sacrifice. There may be some of you listening right now thinking that you're unforgivable. You've done too much. Bad is bad. There's no coming back from it. But let me tell you that Jesus Christ took your sin to that cross and crucified it there with his broken, beat body. All of us. Revelation 3.20 says, Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice, I will come in. If you're hearing this, he's knocking at the door, waiting for you to answer. He's not there waiting to judge you or make you feel bad about your sin. He's there waiting with a smile, with pure, perfect love, arms wide open, ready to take you in his embrace. That is what he is there to do. You will no longer walk alone. You will, you will not, he will not walk beside you. He is going to carry you. We're going to give an invitation now to come down and know Jesus Christ personally. You may be sitting there thinking, it can't be as easy as walking down here and accepting Christ. It wasn't. We talked tonight how hard, how brutal, and how painful it was. But the Lord Jesus Christ was the one that took that hard part upon himself so we didn't have to. If there's any doubt in your mind, come down. Come down and accept Christ. If you're not 100% sure, come down and accept Christ. If you want to recommit your life, come down and accept Christ. Come and, and, and be saved for eternity. Not for this life, not for 50 years for eternity. As this song plays, come down.